Uh, Mr. Buffett, good morning. Um, in your comments about making mistakes and errors like that, can you talk a little bit about your cell discipline when you're in a position and you, you feel like it's no longer good? I mean, what criteria to use to, when you just finally abandon it? Yeah, when I started out, the cell situation has changed over the years. Because when I started out, I had way more ideas than money. I mean, I would go through Moody's manual. I went through it page by page. And then I went through it again, page by page. And I found stocks in there that I could understand that were selling at like two times earnings, even one times earnings. Well, when you only have 10,000 bucks, that, that can get a little frustrating. And, and, and if you don't like to borrow money, which I never like to borrow money, so I was always coming up with more ideas than I had money. So I had to sell whatever I liked least to buy something new that just was compelling to me. And for a long time, I was in that mode. And now our problem is we have more money than ideas. Uh, so we're, we, if you look at our annual report, which is on the uh, internet under, uh, at our homepage, BerkshireHathaway.com, you'll see something in the back called the economic principles of Berkshire. And you will see, which I believe in setting out for my, my partners. They are my partners. I don't look at them as shareholders. I look at them as partners. They're going to be my partners for life. So I want to tell them how I think. And if they don't disagree with the way I think, that's fine, but I don't want them to, I don't want to be disappointed in me. You know? So uh, I lay out there and I say, in terms of our wholly owned businesses, we're not going to sell no matter how much anybody offers this for them. I mean, if somebody offers us three times what something is worth, at Seas Candy, the Buffalo News, Borsheim's, whatever it may be, we're not going to sell it. I may be wrong in having that approach. I know I'm not wrong if I owned 100% of Berkshire because that's the way I want to live my life. I've got all the money I could possibly need. You know, it just amounts to a, ch a change in the newspaper story on my obituary and the amount of money that the foundation has. And to break off relationships with people I like and people that have joined me because they think it's a permanent home, to do that simply because somebody waves a big check at me would be like selling one of my children because somebody waved a big check. So I, I won't do that. And I want to tell my partners I won't do it so that they're not disappointed in me. More and more, with certain stocks, we've got that approach. Now, if we were chronically short of funds and had all kinds of opportunities coming, we might have a somewhat different approach. But our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged perhaps with the management or we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way. I mean, and that happens. So, but we're not going to sell simply because it looks too high in, in all likelihood. I mean, that, I, you can't make that 100 percent, but it's, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's the principle under which we're operating. We, we're generating right now five billion of cash a year at least. So it's a hundred million bucks every week. And, uh, you know, just not, we've been talking here half an hour and I haven't done a damn thing. Uh, so, uh, it's, you know, the, the real question is how do you put it out intelligently? And, and if we were selling things, it'd be just that much more. So there may, there might, there may come a time when that would change. But, but we want to, and I have partners, shareholders, partners, who would say, if you can get three times what C's Candy's worth, why don't you sell it? And that's why I want to be sure before they come in, they know how I think on that. I mean, they're, they're entitled to know.